Good evening. Welcome to The Next Word. I'm your host, Chris Warnke, and tonight we have a very special guest. We have Conchita Sarnoff, who truly uncovered the story about Jeffrey Epstein. Her first book, Trafficking, has come out, has now become a bestseller, but she has a soon-to-be-released second book on the case of Jeffrey Epstein. She's also the executive director of the Alliance to Rescue Victims of Human Trafficking. And boy, what a story. It is. So we'll start from the beginning. Human trafficking. How did you get involved? It was 2006, Christine, and I was in Mexico, and uh, the foreign minister, a former foreign minister at the time, said to me during a formal dinner, um, Conchita, um, you Americans are a bunch of hypocrite. You are buying our drugs, you sell us illegal weapons, and now you're stealing our children. And I was actually baffled by his statement. I mean, mm -hmm. I understood the drugs and I understood the mm -hmm. weapons. I quite, I did not understand what he meant by right. stealing children. The next day he took me to an orphanage, uh, Casitas del Sur, in the north of Mexico City. And 11 children had gone missing and they were all trafficked to the United States for sex. Oh, wow. That was the first time that I even heard the term human trafficking. I had literally no idea. Uh, in my previous incarnation, I was a crisis uh, communications advisor, so nothing to do mm -hmm. with the issue. And then I spoke to a mother at the orphanage, and within 48 hours, I was back in Washington. This was January 2006. And a friend of mine brought a lady friend, Deborah Sigmund, who's the executive mm -hmm. director of Innocence at Risk. Right, right. And she then mentioned the issue of human trafficking, invited me to the Italian ambassador's residence the following day. And there I met a young victim. There were several federal agents. They were uh, showing a film by Mara Servino, the very first film about human trafficking. And I met a very young girl. and. I wow. identified with the child. I, I don't know why. That certainly I had never been trafficked mm -hmm. or I had never been uh, near the issue in any way. And, uh, and I knew that my life had changed. Mm. Well, what an experience. Life-changing. Yes, it was a life-changing experience. And uh, during my investigation, Christine, I traveled to Mexico uh, a couple of times. And during one investigation, with a t totally unrelated case, I find that Jeffrey Epstein is, was arrested for solicitation of prostitution with a minor. And when I find out about his case, because I knew Jeffrey mm -hmm. Epstein, he actually came to my home, and uh, we had a social acquaintanceship mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. many years. I knew him and Glenn Maxwell. Um, I was shocked, and, and the more I read mm -hmm. about the case, this is now 2010, mm -hmm. the more I read about his case and I realized, wait a minute, this is mm -hmm. not a solicitation of prostitution. This is a child sex trafficking case. And so I spoke to the attorneys. I met the attorney, several attorneys at the time, handling several of the survivors. Uh, Brad Edwards, I met, uh, this is 2010, I met Brad Edwards, Spencer Coven. I met the PI uh, working for Brad Edwards, Mike uh, Fiston, um, and uh, Jack Goldberg, and several other attorneys, Adam Horowitz, and um, I realized oh. that they've got to refocus, they've got to restructure, you know, re-identify this case as a trafficking case. And so Brad did, which thanks to him, you know, this case, oh. his dogged determination has really pushed this case forward. And so I, Jeffrey was at the time serving uh, under house arrest in Palm Beach. And because I had his cell phone, I called him oh. and I interviewed him and I started to talk to him and I had a series of telephone conversations with him. He warned me and told me that um, our telephone calls were being taped by the FBI. He told me he was under house arrest. And he also told me, as I described in trafficking, um, that the reason that he was uh, 
you know, uh, framed was because there were poor girls who were trying to extort him. Uh, wow. And so I took the information and, and the case to Tina Brown. Of the... Of, she was the editor the, of the Daily Beast. The Daily Beast. Oh. And the Daily Beast published a six-part series titled Pedophile, Billionaire Pedophile Goes Free. And it was a six-part series that was first published July 2010 through January 2015. And in March 2011, I published the infamous letter written by the former Labor Secretary, Alex Acosta. Oh, my God. Uh, because I had shown him, uh, we had a meeting in Miami at the Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables, Florida, and I had shown him a four-page email that he had written to Jay Lefkowitz, one of Epstein's principal mm -hmm. attorneys, negotiating the non-prosecution agreement. And so no. he asked if Tina Brown would publish his letter, and <coughs> she agreed. And so we published side to side parts, excerpts of the four-page email alongside his letter. Unbelievable. Oh. So fast forward a little bit. Now we're going 2008. Yes. 2009. 2010. Um, I published six uh, six articles. I the last of the articles was the uh, on camera interview of the very first victim who broke the Epstein case. And J let's well, just Jane yeah. Doe one. Okay, I Jane can't. Yeah, she yeah, refu yeah. she does not want to You're be right, an, right. a part of this, and I respect her and mm -hmm. and I respect the wishes of her family, mm -hmm. and we're still in contact. And so I've asked her if she mm -hmm. would be willing to come forward because it is because mm -hmm. of her that the Epstein right. case broke. Right. Um, but she does not want to. Right. She, thank goodness, um, has made a U turn. She's now married, has a child. Um, and uh, her mother is a lovely lady. Um, and so uh, that interview, on-air interview, uh, was published by the Daily Beast in January of 2015. And then I had amassed so much information about the case, and nobody really was interested. I mean, I went to all of mainstream media. I went to New York Times, Washington Post, and you know, the Miami Herald. Everyone, nobody wanted to publish anything. Nobody was interested. This was during, of course, 2008 through 2016. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, well, this information has to come out. It's too complex a case. It's multidimensional. It touches upon different issues, not mm -hmm. just right. the issue of child sex trafficking. Um, and so I began to write my book, uh, a former Mossad agent, and author, Viktor Ostrovsky, who owns The Little Book Patch, actually published Trafficking. Oh, that's great. And, uh, and then I was silenced again. And so after April 2016, James Patterson published a book called Filthy Rich. Um, and, um, and I'm not sure he was silenced, but the media really didn't. Nothing right. happened, really. Where, where Epstein was featured in them. Where Epstein was fe featured, yes. Yeah. It, was about, it was actually about the very first victim that I wow. interviewed on, on air, although he never spoke to her. Patterson never spoke to uh, Jane Doe One, let's call right. her. And so um, in 2018, I mean, a few report, many reporters, I think, heard my SOS back in 2010. In fact, Sharon Churcher, who was working for the Mail on Sunday, was the one who was able to get to Virginia Roberts Jufri because the Daily Mail paid one of the investigators money to give her Virginia's contact information mm -hmm. in Australia. And so the uh, Virginia uh, Jufre, that is her married name, sells her story to the Mail on Sunday for $160,000, and she breaks the agreement, and that's when it, it goes public. So February of 2011, the Jufre story comes out in the UK. Yeah. There begins a whole series of stories. Uh, Prince Andrew loses his position as the trade envoy to the United Kingdom. Really? Yes. The, fir the very first statement by Buckingham Palace is given during Davos at the World Economic Forum, which is the mm -hmm. biggest PR right. event in the world. Right. And Buckingham Palace releases a statement claiming that there is no association between Prince Andrew 
and Jeffrey Epstein. And this was in January of 2015. Wow. And then, so all that information is in trafficking. And then between 2016 and 2018, when the Miami Herald publishes its revised version of the Epstein story, um, then all, excuse me, hell breaks yeah, loose. Right. Uh, but I think this is a very political case, clearly. Uh, you've seen all the politicians yeah. that have been identified, mentioned, accused uh, by Virginia mm -hmm. Giuffre. Um, and so uh, even though the issue is a bipartisan issue and must remain a bipartisan mm -hmm. issue because both parties need to come up with solutions, right. uh, President Clinton, in fact, was under his administration, they enacted the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, which is a very first federal law. Which was to, That's in the year 2000, right. which was to enforce uh, not only protection of victims of trafficking, but also right. prosecution of of predators. Uh, that law has since been reauthorized by w, President W. Bush, by President right. Obama, and by President Trump. And then under President Trump, uh, he has signed six executive orders, all anti-trafficking legislation. He has signed two, uh, uh, forgive me, one declaration and six executive orders. Um, and so he has, he and his daughter uh, Ivanka. Ivanka, she's been very involved. Yeah. Very involved. No, she's uh, been great. Yeah, very, yeah, absolutely. Very involved. They really have been at the forefront <clears throat> of this issue. Yes. Yeah. And I. And the Justice Department. And the Justice well? Department, yes, yes. in fact, before uh, Attorney General William Barr uh, was confirmed, mm -hmm. um, I called him up at, he was still at Kirkland Ellis, and so at that time he could speak to me. Mm -hmm. And he said, Conchita, I give you my word that if, if I am confirmed, I will have a thorough investigation of the Epstein case, which you have seen mm -hmm. he has. Mm -hmm. um, even though he also informed me that he would have to recuse himself because of his position right. with right. Kirkland and Ellis. Right. As you know, most of the attorneys involved in the, oh, in the defense case, in uh, the Epstein case came from Kirkland right. Ellis. Okay. Jay okay. Lefkowitz, okay. Kenneth Starr, oh, uh, Alex Acosta. Oh, wow. I didn't realize, okay. So those three attorneys yes. were all yeah. Kirkland Ellis. Okay. Wow, what a Let me. We're going to have to take a short break. Yes. It's just the key, hold the thought. Yes. <laughs> and we'll come right back. Okay. okay? Thank you. You're watching The Next Word. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Welcome back. You're watching The Next Word. I'm your host, Chris Warnke, and tonight we have Conchita Sarnoff, who broke the entire Jeffrey Epstein story, which you still are going to hear about, and you're going to hear more about this coming spring with her new book that's going to be coming out on the Jeff Epstein case. Cochina, you're a hero, mm -hmm. and I've always said that for what you've done and for what you followed, and just, you know, you've just been there, relentless, and we all thank you, first no, of all. I, um, thank you, oh, Christine. You're but really... I'm an instrument. I'm not. No, but you're, um, you know, you've been my role model, so I love it. Um, but thank you. So thank you. going back to, um, I know the just we talked about the Justice Department, the fact that they really are mm -hmm. taking this very seriously. Yes. And, and, of course, we always need more funds yes. to continue to enforce it. Absolutely. Which is a huge issue. Yes. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to hear, you know, that you know, President Trump and Ivanka, yes. you know, have really Incredible. Move forward. And Absolutely. Sent, they, what, he signed six executive, six executive orders. Six executive orders. Wow, that's, that's impressive. Yes, so it's, and two declarations. So. Right. And, and reauthorized right. the TVPA. Wow, so. amazing. Very so impressive. When we, um, after, you know, like, now it's 2018, and the story is really continuing. Now, continuing. There is more, more to be told, right. more to come. More to come. A lot more to come. In 2020. <laughs> In 2020, wow. 10 years later. 10 years later. 10 years later. I mean, you know, when I look back, Christine, and I think, um, what did I have in mind when I wrote the book? 
in 2016 and when I broke the case wide open in right. 2010. And I think what I wanted to do, what my message was in the Daily Beast report, in trafficking right. and in my upcoming book is we need to not only create laws that protect our at-risk populations, mm -hmm. we also need to enforce those laws. That is, law enforcement must enforce the laws, no matter how rich the predator is. It's irrelevant. Right. I don't care what party he or she it's belongs fun. to, right. and I don't care how much money they have. You must enforce, no one is above the law. Right. No one should be above the law right. in this country, certainly. And so, um, as a result, I think that this case has moved forward, and I am so grateful to all the journalists who heard my SOS in 2010, wow. and I acknowledge them because it is thanks to all the journalists who went forward with their own investigations uh, that uh, this case has gotten really... so much media attention. The world That's amazing. Over. I mean, no, I mean, it was like every it's day. It's global. I mean, it was global. I mean, it was global. phenomenal. It was I was in global. Greece, as you yes, know, yes, and I had yes. people coming up to me at the table a year ago thanking, thanking me. Thanking you. I mean, yeah. who no, would no, have no. ever... Because it's a global issue. It's a yes. global problem. I mean... It is a problem. It's an, a global epidemic. Human trafficking... Huge epidemic. ...has become a global epidemic. Yes. It is, uh, so far, on record, a $167 billion industry. That is larger than Google. Wow. Nike and Starbucks combined. Wow. So what and how are we going to eradicate human trafficking? And I certainly hope that my books, that my work yeah. uh, can help in some way uh, inform those who have the power to legislate yeah. and to enforce the laws. Now there are groups out there that can track yes. and, and, and pick up on young girls or boys that are being yes. trafficked, yes, yes. whether they're on airplanes yes. and trains. or yes. People are becoming much more sensitized, correct? Yes, absolutely. So. In fact, many airports, if you go yes. to many international airports, uh, while you're waiting on the passport control, right. To, right. To, uh, you will see these television monitors announcing and identifying human trafficking and asking citizens to come forward if they've really? seen yes that i have not seen yet it's absolutely <clears throat> it, it's it's become a, a global issue and an important issue of course with all customs uh, right. enforcement officials and in fact american airlines nancy rivard well, nancy's a good friend i was on her board she's an incredible yes. woman yes. and uh i mean my That's heart a, goes she, to her yes. she's quite yes, a, she's a quite, lady yes and, and she's still here yes yes and still, she started she's trained i know because i was on her board yes and she trained all of her yes. flight attendants yes. to watch for uh, traffic victims, traffic potential victims. traffic yes, victims. Yes. So Nancy Rivard is yes, certainly she's a, she's a heroine. Another hero oh, totally a heroine. Uh, totally Total a heroine. Total heroine. And, uh, <clears throat> and then Delta also. Yes, Delta stepped up. Yes, Also no, no, no. trained, and now many airlines have been trained. Really? That's yes. great. So you have airlines, you now have hotels. Also hotels, getting involved because you know many of the yeah, victims of are taken of to course. the hotels to service clients. So the Hilton Hotel yes. and other large chains, and I certainly hope that all hotel chains are yes, also get yeah, involved in, right. in the issue. Uh, you have the Department of Justice, the Blue Campaign, which is doing a tremendous. Oh, the Blue amount. Campaign. It's Tell called me the about Blue that. Campaign. Mm -hmm. Well, there they are, as as you can imagine, because they're part right. of the Department of Justice. They're more of a criminal focused right. campaign okay. uh, to prosecute and deter and protect. That is their their right. main objective. And so they have had this Blue Campaign for oh my goodness um, years. I think. Um, Five years, I could be oh, wrong, well, uh, but for many, many years now. And so they're also involved. Uh, January is now the Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Oh, it is a perfect. So this so is a timing. perfect So I'm glad timing. you're here. Thank you That's very great. much. Uh, January 11th, the Blue Campaign uh, oh, wow. uh, asked all those involved in the fight to stop human trafficking to wear blue. So we all, everybody wore oh, blue. Oh, great. Oh, my God. Saturday, great. January really? 11th. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the fight, the Epstein case might have finished as we know it, right. but the fight to eradicate, to eradicate trafficking it, it continues. And continues. And I certainly, until my dying breath, will right. continue to fight to protect our children. 
That's wonderful. And I ask you, so a lot of disadvantaged communities too, do you see a, a much more uptake because of just because they're all just like Native American tribes, I've Absolutely. heard. Absolutely. Or other. All. I mean, um, at risk populations, at -risk populations, of course, are the really most vulnerable. Are the most vulnerable yeah. because, yeah. you know, there's money involved right. in trafficking, right. there's this whole process of grooming. Right. Uh, I have heard, I have interviewed victims, nothing to do with Epstein, right. that ended up being trafficked because all they wanted was a manicure and some oh, wow. man online groomed them and said to them, don't worry, I will pay for your manicure and I will pay for your clothing oh, wow. because their mother, their single mother could not pay for their clothing right. and manicure. Yeah. So you have cases yeah. that you know just defy right. the, the conscience of how, can, how any adult can abuse a child and, and it, under circumstances right. that are so Surreal. So yes, sir. How? So your alliance to rescue victims of, victims trafficking, of trafficking. It was an organization was founded in, in 2013, 2000, okay. late 2000. But we weren't really structured right. until 2014. Right. And um, it is the organization is a Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. organization to raise awareness of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And one of our missions, our goal, is to open a safe house for trafficked That's great. children. Uh, we still have not reached mm -hmm. the goal, so I hope that one day we right. do because right. we need uh, right. safe a safe house for haven. children. Right. There is a terrific safe house in D.C. called Fair Girls, oh. but that's for adult women, okay. and it's a short term. Okay. And so we're looking to do to one for long term, young, under the age of 18. Right. Uh, and the other thing, the other, um, uh, I think, uh, success is that I co-founded with uh, Professor Catherine Donato at Georgetown mm -hmm. University at the uh, Walsh School of Foreign Service under the ISM program, uh, the Human Trafficking Research Center program. And so hopefully oh, that's great. we are now that's in great. the, thank you, in the process of fundraising to open up a center to teach and to research Oh human trafficking. God. That's great. Yes. Then you have so many other organizations here, um, you know, that are like Multiple. Innocence at Risk. And, Innocence at Risk. You know, and well, there's wearethorn.org, oh, really? which uh, that's run by um, Ashton Kutcher. Mm -hmm. um, and he founded, he and Demi Moore, when they were married, oh. founded uh, a foundation, which then eventually turned into wearethorn.org. Oh, wow. And they actually create tools, online tools, uh, applications uh, and they're given for free to the federal government to help track and identify tra traffickers. Oh, that's terrific. Yes, it's wow. a terrific organization. Wow. Um, I mean, there are many, many. many, many. In Los Angeles, you have CAST. Yes, you have quite a few in Los so Angeles. So there are thousands. You know, DC is a candy land of organizations. Right, right. And you see the impact, and you absolutely. see absolutely well. Yes. Uh, school programs, you yes, know, we yeah. we had created our organization, uh, created an educational program back in 2014, which we pitched to the mm -hmm. state of Florida, the board, uh, mm -hmm. school board, and um, they took it upon themselves to uh, distribute it. And so now there are many educational programs across the country. Oh, that's that's, and I mean, that's that's what we need to do. We need to the educate. Lord's work. Yeah, I mean, yeah, educate absolutely. That's it. Twenty years ago, we talked about it. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. I yeah. didn't know in two thousand six. Well, I had no idea what yes. this was. Now, I had heard about it. Of course, you know, the NFL, the, you know, the Super Bowl is coming enormous up. Enormous issue. And that's the enormous issue. Yes. What what are what are organizations like the NFL doing? I mean, aren't they stepping up? I, you know, I do not follow the NFL yeah, yeah, right. as much That's as I love right. watching football, right, but right. I don't follow them. Right. But I do know that there is a tremendous amount of pushback, uh, meaning by the NFL, yeah. they have raised awareness of the issue, yes. the, the AFL and NFL, and, yeah. and also the organizations on the ground, uh, and the activists, the abolitionists, I mean, they're all over the map when it comes to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl and the Rose Bowl right. and all the bowls that are played. Are they? Yes, Good. yes. So you will see a tremendous amount of uh, activity right. during those during events. Those. So the book, so it took you how long? I mean, it took you... Well, the first book took me from 2000 and the first book covers the first half of the Epstein case right. up until April right. 2016 when it was published. And the second book will cover 
from April 2016 okay. through present day. So or everything day. that has happened after April 2016 through the well, date of publication. But the first book you have to self-publish. Absolutely. Self -published. I self-published and only this one incredible man, former Mossad agent, Viktor Ostrovsky, he was the only one who agreed to publish my first book. He actually knew. I told him 27 publishers turned me down for fear. Amazing. 27 for fear of libel. I have all their emails. Well, and so here we are today. Here we are today. <clears throat> Spring. Of Spring. 2020, yes. your second book comes out. Yes. yes. And the full story. The full story. The com things that I never mentioned in trafficking because right. I was scared. Right. right. And because I didn't have a publisher. Right. You know, it was me against right. the world. world. Right. And now, uh, <clears throat> not that the publisher is going to right. do anything, but of course, it, 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 it I yes. feel safer yes. knowing that they will be, you know, that a publishing house will be publishing me and, right, and right. Uh, standing so the alongside plans, me. Right, amazing. The plans then will be to go into cities and yes. to talk about overall talk issues. Talk about the and, issues. And I mean, that's really the objective. And, yes, because yes, of course. Because Jeffrey course. Epstein is dead. Uh, how he died is a different issue right, and a different right, story. Right. Uh, why he died is also a different right, story. Right. But the fact that his case has become a global Case. case and basically he has become a poster child right. for right. child sex trafficking right. so. and and no. and another <clears throat> question that was raised and I've had a board member Terry Learman from mm -hmm. Maryland right. Steny Hoyer's right. former right. chief of right. staff um, a great Marylander all, absolutely an incredible man also <clears throat> mentioned something that I thought was very important that I was going to write about and and he convinced me that it was the right thing to um, to include and that is campaign finance reform right, right. because um, the question is in his party would this case have Ever become come to what it is today right. would right. would right. it have come to right. light right. Would right. all these politicians be identified? Right. The answer is a clear no. A clear no. Well, I wish we could go on, but Conchita, thank you. Thank you. For everything. Thank you for having me. For your me. devotion. Thank you. It's amazing. Thank you. What has happened and what will transpire and all the good that's going to come out of what you've been doing all these, all these years. So thank you. Thank you, Christine. You've been watching The Next Word. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Good night.